Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and you go to turn on your bathroom exhaust fan and you hear something like this. It's a safe bet that you are not alone. Seems like most bathroom exhaust fans have some type of squealing or ticking noise and this is not per uh, the normal design. It just happens over time, parts wear out, a bunch of grime and dust uh, get caught up into the fan and nobody cleans uh, these things out. So before you jump into a big project, rip out your old fan and install one fresh, stick with me and I'll show you some different troubleshooting steps and how you can solve uh, the squealing or ticking noise with a simple part or maybe just some adjustment. So we'll save you some time and money and we'll jump right in. So first things first, don't forget your safety glasses when you're doing this work. We're gonna remove the grill and lens combo, which is just held in with two spring clips, which are very easy to remove from slots on both sides of the fan. Now to remove the light reflector assembly. Remove the light bulb, and then you'll see a wing, wing nut, which all you have to do is just loosen that and take it off the bolt. And then the reflector assembly itself will pull off, and then just unplug the connector, which is connected to the main light and also the night light socket. Okay, so now really the source of probably about 90% of all issues, and that is the motor assembly itself. Just unplug the motor, and then take out the Phillips head screw. Once you have the screw out, you'll have two slots on the other side. So just pull down the right hand side and then take the slots out of the housing. All right, so now I have the motor assembly on the workbench. And what I wanna do is confirm that with the motor assembly plugged into an extension cord and Obviously be careful here because the fan blades are, are open. I want to hear to see if the same issue is present. And we can hear that ticking, right? Some type of interference uh, where we know most likely the fan blades and the bracket for the fan motor assembly is, is having some interference. So first we'll take the push nut off you gotta be careful, these push nuts are tough. Um, you have to deform them to get the tabs to release from the quarter inch shaft on the motor. But as you can see here, it deforms it enough. You usually have about one go at this. You can try to straighten it back out, but then if you straighten it back out, sometimes uh, it will fatigue. So then the push nut will, like this case, and now you have two halves not a very effective push nut. Don't worry, not a huge issue. I'll show you later on uh, how you can get a replacement push nut from pretty much any big box uh, home improvement store. Uh, and then that will, that will uh, serve as a push nut going forward. So just remove the fan assembly, uh, just apply pressure to both sides and it's pretty easy to remove. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the motor uh, itself from the bracket. So I'm just using vice grips, not necessarily the best tool for the job, uh, but we'll remove both of these nuts. Uh, and the nuts are attached, you'll, you'll see there's kind of a rubber mount. This is an ISO mount. It isolates the vibration of the motor uh, to the bracket, so it helps to reduce noise uh, as the fan is in operation. And then the motor will just pull off. Uh, sometimes the rubber from the ISO mount kind of sticks on it, but you should be able to pull it right off. And, and now you have everything disassembled. Uh, and what I would recommend doing is go ahead and you have everything right in front of you. Go ahead and clean it. Uh, mine's a little dirty here and most likely uh, yours is as well. So nothing fancy, just need some, some water. Uh, I don't recommend necessarily doing this in your kitchen sink. Uh, this is kind of a laundry sink. So I'll move the lens from the grill and then just uh, and have a, a scratch pad here cleaning off all the, the dust and grime that builds up over time. Doing the same thing to the bracket, doing the same thing to the grill 
itself. And this will just get everything really looking, looking like new. Uh, now, no water needed, but uh, with a shop towel, just trying to clean up the motor here. Uh, and you can use Q-tips as well. So now everything is cleaned. Now we're ready to go back and put everything back together. So make sure the cord is going to the correct side where it will have the slot for the plug uh, once you reassemble everything. So with those nuts back on the motor, now we're going to work on putting the fan on uh, the quarter inch shaft. Now this shaft is keyed as expected, so that means it has a flat portion to it, and that flat portion uh, will line up with a flat surface on the uh, fan blade itself. So the flat, flat surface on the shaft is facing you, and you can kind of see that there where the old, there's kind of a grime, grease grime trail that shows where the flat portion is. Um, but you want to line those up, take your time, make sure you're lining up those correctly uh, to ensure the best fit. All right, so very important part here is to make sure no interference. That was our original issue. So you want to push the fan blades down as low as possible, uh, but making sure they're not hitting uh, the bracket itself. Now the push nut. So we broke the first one, but what you can do is get a quarter inch push nut like this one from Lowe's or Home Depot, and it might not look like it, but this is gonna work. So this is actually what goes on the end of a, a shaft, like an axle to hold a wheel on like a kid's toy uh, or a lawnmower wheel. And what we can do is take some side cutters and kind of snip away the uh, outside hub or plastic here because I really only need the push nut metal component in the middle. So once you kind of snip all around that and then you can just easily pry that push nut right out of there. So we really just need the push nut. Now this one uh, is quite a bit actually stronger uh, than the other one. So it takes a little bit more to get it on the shaft. But what you can do is put the vice grips out a little bit wider on the edge of the push nut, not close to the shaft, but out wide, and then push that down and you'll be able to seat that push nut on the shaft and push it down where it's snug against the fan blades. Be careful here, if you, if you push down too much force, you're gonna push the fan blades down and most likely push them into the housing and maybe not notice it, and then go reinstall everything and notice that you have interference. So take your time, make sure you uh, spin and have the, the fan in that orientation where gravity is pulling uh, the fan blades down in the configuration you would have them uh, on the actual uh, on the actual bracket. And now you can hear everything sounds good and we don't have any interference and we're ready to reassemble everything back into the housing. So it's just in reverse, right? So the two tabs will go into the housing and then we'll push up the right hand side. We're, now we just need to uh, set the Phillips head screw and try not to drop it. So screw that in, and we'll now everything's secure, and we'll um, plug in the fan motor prior to putting in the, the light reflector plate. All right, so that's good. Now going uh, into the light reflector plate, make sure you put the connector in, thread the bolt through the hole, Make sure you have your wing nut handy, and then just thread that wing nut back on, uh, just snug so the reflector plate is in position. Again, this has a regular light, which, which we use, and then also a night light socket. I haven't been using that. Um, it's up to you uh, and up to your wiring configuration on this, whether or not you're using it. But you'll see that night light on some uh, different models. All right, home stretch. So the grill and lens going in last with those spring clips. Just take your time. You would hate to drop this and shatter the glass lens uh, when you're almost done. So the true test, we'll test out the fan here.
So that's it, our problem is solved. I know the one we were dealing with was super easy. It was just the fan uh, itself was sitting too low on the motor shaft. Hopefully yours is that easy, but if not, if your motor shot or there's some issue with the overall uh, fan assembly, uh, or if your blades themselves are damaged uh, and you need a new one, all that stuff's replaceable and it's super easy to get. Uh, I will, in the description, put links to the overall assembly, which would be the, the fan blades themselves, the motor, and the, the bracket. Uh, you can buy that as a unit. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks. You can buy the fan blades for about 12 or 13 bucks. You can buy the motor. I think it's an official Newtown motor for about 40. That's where most of the cost uh, of that overall assembly is. That's going to save you one, money, and two, a ton of time if you try to replace this entire unit. If the box, the housing box, is of different size, you might be cutting away drywall. If you do not have attic access like this one, this is in the basement, uh, it could be quite a bit more intensive of a project. Not impossible, uh, not beyond, I'm sure, your capabilities, but Take your time. If you have a squealing fan, if you have a ticking fan, uh, go ahead and, and disassemble everything, check it out, test it, uh, and see if you can't just get a part or uh, just a small adjustment will take care of your issue. So thanks for joining, appreciate it. Hopefully this one helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We put new videos out about every week and thanks for stopping by, take care.